Hi, welcome to Knott's Berry Farm. How can I help you today? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be talking about my working experience at Knott's Berry Farm. And if you don't know what Knott's Berry Farm is, it is an amusement park that's located in Buena Park, California. And it's a part of the Cedar Fair Parks. And it also has a Soak City to it, which is a water park, like right across from it. And I have personally worked at both Soak City and Knott's Berry Farm. And hopefully this helps you. I've been working at Knott's Berry Farm for about a year and 10 months. So this July 2019 um, would have been my two year anniversary with the, the company um, but however I quit like a week ago so uh, I'll be quitting just short of two years so I've worked there for a long time I've worked there for two summers two haunts two boysenberry festivals two peanuts uh, celebration things and uh, two Christmases I believe yeah so um, I have experience with all that I've worked out one summer of Soak City if you haven't seen, this is like the uniform. I'm not wearing the pants that we have to wear because they're kind of uncomfortable. So I work, so this is my uniform right now. My name tag, since it's the Boys and Berry Festival right now, we get this pin. We get pins every Christmas, haunt, Boys and Berry Festival, and sometimes peanut celebration, I believe. And we get them for free and we get to wear them on our uniforms and they're really cute. So I love that. And this is just the vest. So I moved back a little bit so you can see the uniform. So you know I am legit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the interview process was fairly easy. Uh, Knott's Berry Farm was my first job and it was the only place that would hire me first. So I was looking for a job in summer of 2017 when I was going to be a senior in high school. And I had no experience working anywhere but interning and volunteering places. And so no one would hire me. So I applied. And immediately after I applied online, uh, there was this, they sent me an email about doing an interview in person, like immediately after I submitted the application. So I went in and to the employment center at Knott's and then the guy, he asked me like questions. It's not like a normal interview with questions, but it's just kind of like a very brief interview, like when you want to work here, I think. And then he asked me if you were to get hired, what department would you want to work in? And my two options were food and guest services. And I was like, there's no way I'm doing food. So I was like, guest services. So, and then after that, um, he said to come back on like this certain date for a group interview. So if you go from the first screening interview from that email to a group interview, getting offered that, then you have a good chance of maybe getting hiring. So it's like, kind of two interviews in one. So the group interview was, it was very interesting. Like it was not a normal interview because it was with other people. I think it was a total of five people, including myself, three girls, and then two guys. And there was like two different like employees doing the interview and we had to do activities like building stuff. And then we also had to reenact like if a customer is unhappy, what would you do in the situation if you're the manager? And so some of us were acting as a customer, some of us were acting as a manager, and they want to see how you get along with other people, how you solve problems. And so um, it was easy, and they would ask some questions about like maybe like Cedar Fair and uh, like Peanuts character. So make sure you know about that so you don't look dumb. Um, I still don't know all the characters either, so it's okay if you don't. <laughs> And uh, Knott's Berry Farm is a good first job for a lot of young children and they hire like young people like I was so surprised when I started working there because there's young people everywhere I was like man young people run this place the reason why the group interview was kind of like awkward is because you have to work with other people but at the same time you're competing with them for the job so it felt kind of uncomfortable with that but it's okay and so after that happened they pulled me in individually to an office telling me and I think they asked me some more questions about myself and I gave them my resume, I think. And then um, they pulled me and then two other the two other women into a room and told us we got the job right then and there. And the other two guys didn't get it, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's how the interview went. And then I started, they do give you like an orientation about the park and they give you a tour around it. And um, 
you'll get your individual training on the job. I got hired as a gate attendant, which means I take tickets at the main gate. I scan people in, I, I stamp them as they're exiting the park so they can come back in. Like I said, I work for guest services and as a gate attendant, like the job duties sound fairly easy. The only thing is you're standing all day on your feet, you're in the hot sun, sometimes there's not shade. Uh, you can wear sunglasses outside, but they can't be the ones that like, you have to be able to see your eyes through it, so you can't wear the ones that are just like really shiny. Make sure people aren't coming in with fraudulent tickets or people who aren't coming in with children that are above three years old, because there's a lot of parents that do sneak children in um, for free when they're old, too old. Like I would see parents pushing children half the half of my height in a stroller and I'm like, there's no way that kid is two. Like I might be five foot two, but there's no way that a two year old is half my height. So it's very sketchy things like that and you have to ask them nicely like, excuse me ma'am, how old is your child? And let me tell you, they will always be like, uh, she's four. And I'm like, okay, well, she needs a ticket. And the ticket was right behind you. And they'd be like, oh, no, 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 I meant she's two. She'll be three next month. They always do that, they always lie. And I think that was the hardest part for me is that like being lied to every day when I know people are lying to me. But I know it's not them personally lying to me, but yeah, it's annoying. And it's just kind of like, what, how are these parents like, teaching their children to lie you know it's just ugh, i don't even understand like people, the things people will do to save a buck nonsbury farm is the place where adults become children in the good and bad way um, i was at the gate for about two months uh, it was a fairly like easy job it's only hard because you have hundreds and hundreds of guests in line waiting to get inside the park and sometimes people call off and you don't have enough gate attendants to be at every turnstile to take people in and then Cedar Fair is very on you about put the line down, cut the line down, make sure there's no line, let people in because our managers of like the park get upset because the people above them get upset at them, which get upset at the team leads, which get upset at us, and the customers are upset at us, upset at us because of the long lines, even though it's an amusement park and there's thousands of people in there at any given moment. So that's what's like, stressful is a lot of things are happening at once. And if you're concerned about not being able to handle a stressful situation like that and multitask, let me tell you, I listen. I have never been able to like multitask under stress like that really well. But through this job, I have gained that experience and I've grown and learned and I can handle that type of situation way better now. I'm not gonna say it doesn't like freak me out a little bit. It still does to a certain degree, but not as much. So don't be discouraged if you are the type of personality because you will grow if you allow yourself to. So I definitely think that, you know, practice is worth it. So don't be afraid to apply for a job because of that reason. In September, right before Not Scary Farm season started, I got hired, I got bumped up to Ticket Booth. And I love Ticket Booth, but let me tell you, it was so stressful, like the first week of doing Ticket Booth because there's so much stuff and you're dealing with large sums of money. Like my starting fund was like $506 and I can end up with like anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000 in cash alone. So you have a lot more responsibilities as a Ticket Booth person. You don't get a pay raise from being like moved up but you do get more experience working with money and with customers and same thing as well, you have to cut down lines, but you also have a lot of stuff like taking people's signatures, collecting drafts, um, handling large transactions. Sometimes groups of like school groups and church groups will come to you when they're supposed to go to guest relations, but they come to you anyway and you're supposed to serve them and they pay with a lot of money because they're buying a lot of tickets. So um, I would say guest services is a good department overall. I think that like, the duties of the job as itself at Knott's Bay Farm aren't difficult. It's just because you have, it's hard because you have to deal with a bunch of customers at one time. And that's pretty stressful because everyone has a problem. And I'm surprised at the amount of adults who have problems and don't think smart enough. Like there's been so many times where guests could totally avoid a situation but they come to you complaining about their problem and they sometimes blame it on you and you can't take that personally and understand that no guest is ever worth your job. Literally, they're not worth your job. Other things after Ticket Booth, you can go to guest serve, guest relations, um, learning how to work at guest services, information, and then the next step is team lead. Um, there's also phones, which you could like call people or know you answer the phone when people call Nosberry Farm. And then after that, it's like management. 
started off with 1050 which was the minimum wage in 2017 in California now uh, after my after 2017 was over when 2018 hit the minimum wage went to eleven dollars so that's what I was getting paid and then it went to eleven ten after my one year my one year raise was ten cents and then um, I started making twelve twenty five in 2019 which was I think the minimum wage in California then so it's not like I really didn't really get a raise for being there that long um, I would say that I was a decent employee I did everything I was supposed to do I in the beginning, I used to take shifts all the time and this and that. I'd never been rude to customer and whatnot. You do get, uh, what's it called? Paid sick leave. Like, I think I got like three days, three shifts worth. And uh, I've only ever called out three times. And I use those, those days, those three days. It is paid, but you're supposed to use it for like your sick hours. Uh, and you get paid for, you get paid overtime for working on holidays like Christmas Eve or close of Christmas and like I think I don't think you get paid for Halloween but all the other holidays that you work that are like mainstream holidays you do get paid overtime after a year working there I believe if you're like me you're still considered seasonal even if you work there for like a long time because you're only considered part-time until you work a certain amount of hours like consistently at Knott's Berry Farm, so a lot of employees at Knott's are all seasonal because they don't work enough, but also at the same time the company doesn't give us enough hours to become part-time and I think they do it to be, um, to not give you the benefits like health insurance and whatnot. It's seasonal even though I would be considered part-time anywhere else. Management at, in my department, so it's, the management, since it's a huge park, is different among the different departments. My guest service management, I was surprised. Honestly, as a first person, as a first job, I thought I was gonna not like my management because I thought they were gonna like be mean to me and hate me and be rude and be condescending. But they were not like that at all. I loved all my managers. There was a ton of like supervisors, like man there's one manager and then desk assistants and teammates. Like they were all great. I got along with all of them. There was only ever one person uh, that I did not like, and that's because she scared me. Like she legit like intimidated me and terrified me because like the way she came off to people and one time I think I swear like she was firing somebody and it was just like the I just felt scared for the person getting fired I don't know what happened but it was just a scary situation I was like oh my gosh I hope I'm never in that thing a reason why I didn't like her is because she never tried to get to know me as a person as a like associate as a co-worker as a colleague well, not I don't think I should say colleague uh, as associate because all the other team leads, all the other managers, supervisors, they were like my work buddies, you know, I could joke with them, I could tell them about my life, this and that, like I felt like we were cool and like friends, but this one person, I never felt that and I felt like she only associated with other people in management and I did not like that and I was so happy when she moved departments, so yeah, uh, I'm not trying to throw shade, I'm just going to say you're going to meet all walks of life. It is a very diverse employer, not very far I miss. And I think they care a lot about you. Like they try the best to accommodate for things in your life and stuff. Um, but it is work, so there are times where people are stressed out and busy and don't take it personally. It's like everyone has those days at work. Scheduling and flexibility, this is like the best thing that Knott's Berry Farm offers its workers. So I Worked a lot my first year at Knott's Berry Farm. I, during the school year, I would only work Saturdays and Sundays, but during the rest of like the break, summer and winter break, I would expand my hours, so I would work probably like six days a week. They're very accommodating for that, because I feel like some other places wouldn't want you to work more than two days a week, but I could only work two days a week, because I had school the rest of the time. And usually my shifts would be like eight hours, um, seven and a half hours, Sometimes I got like a four hour or two hour shift, which are like the worst because it's like you go all that way for like just two hours. But mostly they've always been like seven and a half hours. Like my shifts could be like anywhere from like 8.30 to 4.30, 8.30 to 4. They could also be night shifts. Usually you get night shifts when it's like a very like busy time, like during the summer, during the winter. Or no, you can get like 
12 to 7 or something like that. The midday shifts are like the worst because they like you can't do anything in the morning and you can't do anything at night. And so um, they're very flexible with scheduling. So if you're very busy and you can't be at work all the time, I would definitely recommend this job. Um, the bad thing about that is that or the good thing about that is that you get more hours when you're out of school, like during the breaks and when everyone else is at, in break, but you get less hours when everyone's back in school because it's not a peak time and people aren't going to Knott's Berry Farm. So if you need consistent hours, this is not a place for you. This place does not have consistent hours all throughout the year. So yeah, just be mindful of that. And you can trade shifts with people if you want and you can request days off you can change your availability you have to do it three weeks in advance benefits that we have is we get into park for free we get into any city for a park for free uh, we also get two tickets every quarter of the year for like friends and family you can't sell them if you sell them you'll lose your job uh, if you're a part-time employee you get four tickets quarterly and then um, we do get like a, we used to get like a discount at the ticket booth for tickets. It used to be like $48, but as they've raised their prices, our ticket costs the same thing as a child ticket. So I don't really consider it a discount anymore, but that's the case. Um, you do get like, they do have flyers about discounts for like Skechers or like a gym membership. I've never used it personally, um, but yeah, there's like those things that happen sometimes. Uh, there's also... You get a discount on like merchandise inside the park. I think it's like 10 or 20 percent off. There is this thing in May, and it's like the called like I forgot what it's called, but it's like this event for Knott's Berry Farm employees for like celebrating. They get to go on rides, eat free food, and this and that, and try and win prizes. Uh, one day in May before the summer starts. It's like a summer bash kind of thing. And I went once and it was pretty fun, but I mean like I go to the park every day So it's kind of like what's new kind of thing Another benefit is that we have this a place called Four Corners Cafe Cafe And it's like where the employee break areas and they sell pretty cheap food um, The chef specials are never really that good tasting like they look really good, but they never taste good They always taste bland though. They're like chicken tenders chicken tender quesadilla is pretty good though get recognized a lot there's these things called thank you cards that like people like the management can give to you if you they see you do a good job um, I have gotten I think probably three or four in my time being there and they were all within my first year of working there I believe and you put them in this little drawing box to get a prize and I actually won a prize before I got two tickets to Big Air which is a trampoline park in Buena Park so that is a thing oh and I forgot to mention during Christmas time they have like this like I think it's raffling. I think it's during Christmas raffling where you can like try and win prizes. Yeah, they, you don't get really recognized. I mean, they have like employee of the quarter for like each like you know department and stuff. But I've only ever seen like management type people on there. So let's let's talk about customers. So I think that this is the biggest downside to the job, and. Even though customer service is universally hard to deal with around, I feel like at amusement park, it's extremely worse. And this is why. It's hot outside. There's thousands of people in the park. There's long lines. Things run out. There's not enough food. There's not enough. The ride breaks down. Um, there's not enough employees to help all the people. Stuff like that happens. And because we're dealing with so many people, there's so many more problems, but yet there's not enough like team leads, managers, people like me to help the customers out. And this, this frustrates them. So I understand why people get upset and frustrated, but customers have the worst attitude. It's, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know how they treat Disneyland employees, but I feel like they, they take us as, this is not Disneyland, this is cheaper than Disneyland. You know, this was where we could be like ghetto or something. And I'm not meaning ghetto like for a certain race, I'm talking about across races. I've seen people have like no character at all whatsoever here. And it's definitely ruined my day a lot of the times. And I've only had like a handful of guests who've made my day. But you will have guests that are like, 
can you give me your manager? Can you write your, your name down? Can you write your manager's name down? And don't give them your last name though. And so, um, I've just gotten in the habit when I have a problem and they're not listening to me and I know my manager's gonna say the same exact thing and I can't do anything for them. I'll call them, I'll, I'll ask them before they ask me, do you wanna speak to my manager? Kind of thing, so it's just, you have to get over that barrier. This is not a job that I could see myself doing long term because of the customers. The job itself and my coworkers are amazing, but the customers take a toll on my mental and physical well-being. So I had to leave. But I think for a short period of time, this job is pretty good. Yeah, customers are extremely rude and there's just a lot of situations that they can avoid. Like I've had customers complain about they can't use their season passes, they can't, they don't have enough money to buy tickets, and they've driven two miles away or they've driven from San Diego. And I'm just like thinking on the back of my mind, you could have called our office and asked this online over the phone before coming here. So besides the customers, the job is good. I I think all my overall satisfaction with this job is that it's decent. Um, I'm leaving it because of transportation wise. It's 20 miles round trip from my house. The hours aren't consistent and I just needed some change in my life. And yeah, so I, if you are like 16, you need a job, no experience, try it out at an amusement park. Cedar Fair Entertainment Company is dedicated to providing our guests with world-class thrills, family fun, and entertainment guided by the principles of safety, service, courtesy, cleanliness, and integrity. Woo! Let's make beautiful memories, everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joy Rowden, and I'm a first-year journalism major here at Cal State.